All right, Shalom. I want to give all praise and glory unto Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Ba'ashem, Ha'rakah Kodash. The honors goes out to the other apostles of Great Millstone for teaching us this truth. I also want to acknowledge all the Akiam pushing this truth with sincerity in uh, the streets of Babylon and also on these videos, all right? But the Spirit had me on Ephesians 1 and 1 today to start out with. And uh, the reason is, is because uh, why I was inspired is because, you know, when you're out there at camp, Christians always refer to Ephesians, you know, they want to go to Ephesians because, you know, if you look in chapter 2, it talks about the Gentiles, which I'm not going to go in on that chapter. But what they don't realize is that, you know, the Gentiles that's referring to are the Gentiles who are Israelites, who were carried away as strangers to dumb idols, right, and became Gentiles. Our people are the Gentiles that Yahweh Shai died on the cross for, okay? And it's, uh, you know, it's a confusion that these Christians can't understand. They think that the Gentile is talking about them and all the, and all the other nations. But they don't understand the Bible because they don't understand precepts, all right? Just before I start in there, let me go to uh, 2 Corinthians 12 and... Let me see, I'm trying to remember. Maybe it's 1 Corinthians. Yeah. And so, 1 Corinthians 12 and 1, it says, Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, as in Israelites, because these were the brethren of Paul, I would not have you ignorant. Ye know that ye were Gentiles, carried away unto these dumb idols, even as ye were led. All right, so that shows you that the Israelites became Gentiles when they were carried away captive, okay? Right now, all in America, all the majority of the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans are Gentiles, which means strangers, all right? They're strangers to uh, Yahweh because they don't know Yahweh, all right? They're too busy calling on, on uh, the demon Jesus Christ, all right? Which, for you new people out there, because, you know, you ask if we believe in Jesus Christ. Well, we believe in the Messiah, but we believe that, um, that uh, Jesus Christ is set up by the Edomites, all right? And uh, Yahweh Shai is the true Messiah who died on the cross for the, uh, for the forgiveness of sins of the elect of Israel. Okay, who you see these our people were Gentiles. All right, so let me let me go into back to Ephesians. And let's start there again. Ephesians 1. It says, Paul, an apostle of Yahweh Shai, by the will of Yahweh to the saints which are at Ephesus and to the faithful in Yahweh Shai. All right, so it says to the saints, all right? So you start the chapter, you start the, the book of Ephesians, and it says to the saints, all right? So now let's go to Psalms in 148 and 14. This, cause this tells you who the saints are, all right? So you Christians who want to bring up Ephesians, you know, all the time, you have to understand who the Gentiles are, right, and who the saints are. This is Psalms 148, 14. It says, He also exalted the horn of His people, the praise of all His saints, even of the sons of Israel, a people near unto Him, praise ye Yahweh. So this verse tells you who the saints are. They're, they're His they're the sons of Israel are the saints, all right? Because that word children, it actually means sons in the Hebrew, all right? So, 
showing you already in two scriptures that he's dealing with the nation of Israel and he's not dealing with these heathen nations. He did not die. Yahweh Shai, the Hamashiach, the Messiah, did not die. He did not come for all people. All right. No, he, the saints who are of Israel. And then in Ephesians 1, it says the brethren. Okay. Or I, actually, that was in uh, Corinthians. So let me get back on this uh, verse 2. Grace be to you and peace from Yahweh our Father and from Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. Blessed be the power Yahweh and Father of our Lord Yahweh Shai, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Yahweh Shai. According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Alright, so Yahweh Shai and Yahweh chose the saints who are the elect, who are the prophets, before the foundation of the world, okay? We were there during the creation. We assisted in the creation. Alright, if you're an elect man, you were literally assisted in the creation of the world. Uh, verse 5, having pre predestinated us unto adoption, the adoption of the children by Yahweh Shai to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. So the adoption is according to the good pleasure of his will, all right? Not according to what you think it means, you know? And let's, let's since we're on the word adoption, let's go to Romans 9 and 3 to show you per further proving, you know, who is eligible for this adoption. Let's go to it. Romans 9 and 3. For I could wish that myself were accursed from Yahweh Shai for my brethren, my kinsmen according to the flesh, who are Israelites, to whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the service of Yahweh and the promises. They're right there. Per, the word pertaineth means belongs to. So who does the adoption belong to? It belongs to the Israelites, all right? So you Christians who keep coming to the camps, you want to bring up Ephesians, you know, you're just, you're, you're going off, all right? You don't understand who you're talking about. You're, you're not a Gentile that Yahweh Shai came to, uh, you know, in, for salvation. Go back to uh, Ephesians. Verse 6. To praise of the glory of His grace, wherein He hath made us accepted in the Beloved, in whom... We have redemption through His blood. Who's we? Who's the we? The Israelites. I already broke it down in four or five scriptures showing you who this is talking about. The forgiveness of sins according to the riches of His grace, wherein He hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of His will. See, it's a mystery, you know, so let's let's look up that word mystery. Here we go, mystery. Something that is difficult or impossible to understand or explain. All right. So this is this is the proof right here. It's this this is difficult for you Christians to understand who Ephesians is talking about because it's a mystery, all right? But it's a mystery only to you because the men of the Lord have given the understanding of this knowledge of this truth, all right? We understand who the Gentiles are, which you do not understand who the Gentiles are. That's why you keep coming to the camps, bringing up Ephesians because it talks about Gentiles, but what you don't understand is who the Gentiles are. They're Israelites who became strangers. Right? 
And see, it's difficult or even impossible for you to understand or explain. So that's why it, it, when we go back to Ephesians, let's go back to it. What does it say? Verse, um, wait. Verse 9, having made known unto us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he hath purposed in himself. See, so that word mystery, it's telling you, hey, it's difficult for you to understand. Sometimes impossible, right? But this is showing you who, you know, I've already showed you the verses on who this is pertaining to or who this adoption belongs to. It's the Israelites, the saints who are Israelites, okay? Like we brought out in Psalms and also in Corinthians, 1 Corinthians, all right? Um, let me see something real quick. Okay. This is why we understand this, okay? Because of Amos 3 and 7. Surely Yahweh thy power will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophets. Alright, because that mystery is like a secret. But guess what? His servants who are the prophets of Israel, you know, are, we've been revealed this understanding. And now you can't confound us, and you can't lie to us, and you can't teach us, you can't teach our kids that everyone's a, uh, a Gentile to, with salvation. No, it's only for the Israelites. Yes, you're still a Gentile, but you're not part of the Gentiles that Yahweh Shai, the Hamashiach, died for, all right? That's why I'm showing you this, because we showed you the verses who showed you who the saints are, who showed you who the Gentiles is referring to. And, you know, it's hard for you to understand why, because it's a mystery. All right, go back to Ephesians 1 and we're at 10. <laughs> that in the dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together in one all things in Yahweh Shai, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. All right, dealing with, uh, you know, gather together, dealing with those chariots because they're going to gather his elect. All right. The chariots, Yahweh is going to say in Hebrew, gather mine elect. And those chariots are going to, are going to gather the elect and the one-third of Israel who hearken to this knowledge and to this truth. The ones who don't reject it, but receive it well. All right, so let's go to that verse. I got to remember where it's at. I think it's in Matthew, but I might be wrong. Gather mine Elect, and that's why in that verse, that's why in the verse it says, uh, okay, so it's Mark, Mark 13 and 27. Mark 13 and 7. And then, this is Yahweh Shai talking, and then shall he sent his angels and shall gather together his elect from the four winds from the other uttermost part of the earth to the uttermost part of heaven. See, the same thing. Just what, just what we read in Ephesians. He's gathering his elect. The word elect means chosen. All right? He's not gathering all people. It says right here, And then shall he send his angels and shall gather together his elect from the four winds from the uttermost parts of the earth to the uttermost parts of heaven. All right, and, and it's the uttermost parts of earth because why? Because there are Israelites scattered all over the earth in every single nation. It's a curse. You know, it was a, we were cursed by the, the heavenly father, Yahweh, by Hashem. And that's why we've been scattered everywhere. That's why he's got to gather us from the uttermost parts of the earth and the uttermost parts of heaven. So now when we go back to Ephesians, 
and we go back to verse, uh, was it 10? Yeah, let's read it. That in the dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together in one all things in Yahweh Shai, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. The same thing we read, but that's that gathering. It didn't say gather everybody. It said his gather his elect. So that's how you know these Gentiles in Ephesians is dealing with his elect. It's dealing with his people. It's dealing with his brethren who are Israelites according to the flesh. Sick and tired of you Christians coming to the camps and bringing up Ephesians and you don't have no understanding on, on this chapter, on this book of Ephesians, all right? Verse 11. In whom, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. All right. Let's go to Hebrews for a precept. Six seventeen. It says, wherein Yahweh willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of promise the immutability of his counsel confirmed it by an oath all right who are the heirs of the promise well we just read that let's go back to it so we know about the adoption we know about the promises because who are the heirs of the promise? We got to get it out. It's, it's actually here in four. Okay, start at three again. For I could wish that myself were accursed from Yahweh Shai for my brethren, who are the Israelites, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. His kinsmen are the Israelites. Verse four, who are Israelites, to whom pertaineth the adoption, the glory, the covenants, and the giving of the law and the service of Yahweh, and the promises and we just read that in ephesians or, or no we read that in hebrews all right let's go to it wherein yahweh willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of promise we just read who the heirs of promise belongs to the israelites not you you uh, edomite gentiles not you moabite gentiles not you ishmaelite gentiles no, it's for the Israelite who became Gentiles because they were carried away unto dumb idols, all right? I mean, it's getting, the more we study this truth, it's getting easier and easier just to cut you all up. And we go on those streets and on those highways and byways, and we just, this sword is, is getting stronger. This sword is getting sharper every time we do you know our lessons every time we do our, our camps we're sharpening our sword man right now i'm sharpening my sword you see so when you christians come with up with your false doctrine and your your grape juice you know you know you you're giving you're giving our people strong drink and the only problem is you can't deceive the elect the elect have been given the understanding of this bible so we're going to slice and dice you as after we sharpen our sword every single day, all right? Go back to Ephesians. Twelve. <clears throat> One and twelve that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Yahweh Shai, in whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. Whose salvation? Israel's. Who belongs the promises to? Israel. Who does the adoption belong to? Israel. Who does the servant of God? Israel. All right, so quit coming with your weak ass false doctrine because we're gonna get, we're gonna slice you up, man, with this short, this sword that we sharpen daily. 
sick of it, man. I'm sick of these Christians coming up thinking they can speak over us at the camp, thinking they could come up to us and and uh, and try to break down our Bible, you know. They think that they can use our weapon, you know. No, you can't use our weapon, man. That's that's why we slice and dice you in the streets. This is verse 14, which is the earnest, or actually I skipped 13. Or let's just read 12. That we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Yahweh Shai, in whom ye also trusted. After that ye heard the word of truth and the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed. Ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Who was sealed? The elect of Israel was sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. That's why when you you uh, Christians come up to the camps, you know you you make no sense. You can't back it up. We, you won't even last at the camp. You'll get pissed off and you'll be in your emotions before before we could even break it down for you. You know. That's what's nice about the lessons is we get a chance to, to break it down in depth, and then you know, the people who are willing to see these or who are meant to see these videos will watch them, and they'll learn. All right, verse 14, which which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of His glory. All right, and what is that purchased possession? That's the nation of Israel, the chosen, the elect. Verse 15. Wherefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in Yahweh Shai HaMashiach, and love unto all the saints. And we told you who the saints were. That was Psalms 148, 14. The saints are Israelites. Cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers Oops. that Yah that Yahweh, our power Hamashiach Yahweh Shai the father of glory may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in knowledge of him and see this is wisdom you know it's wisdom when you're able to understand who the true Gentiles that Yahweh Shai died for alright and it's a revelation because before we were taught in these Catholic churches, these Christian churches, Protestant churches, Jehovah's wickedness, all these churches taught us lies. But now, hey, he's given unto us the spirit of wisdom and revelation, as it says in verse 17, and knowledge of him, all right? The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that ye may know what is the hope of his calling, and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. You know, it keeps bringing up saints. So I'm just going to hammer this in one more time. Go back to Psalms just so you know who he's talking about. Because you people are simple, man. You, you, you don't, you know, you want to right away throw yourself in there if you're an Edomite as a Gentile. But you're not, man. You're not a saint. you got to be a saint. It says, Psalm 48. 14 he also exalted the horn of his people the praise of all his saints even of the children of israel a people near unto him praise ye yahweh so you see it's all about the elect it's all about the saints see what you what you uh heathen and you edomites don't realize is not even all of the nation of israel is chosen all right? it's, not, it's not good enough to, to be an Israelite to, to receive salvation. You know, you have to still be chosen. You have to be part of that elect. You have to be part of that one third, you know. And we talk about it all the time. If you want to read about the one third and the two thirds, you go to Zechariah 13.8. I'm not going there now, but that's where you would read about the one third and the two third of the nation of Israel it's speaking of, all right? This is verse 18. It says, The eyes of your understanding, we read that, 19. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us, word who believe, according to the working of his mighty power? See, so there's only a few that believe because a lot of you uh, two thirds, a lot of you Israelites, or I should call you Jakes, 
You, you believe that the, um, the white man is a Gentile who has salvation. That's why when, you, when we read that where it says, um, verse 19, power to us word who believe, all right, you can't believe that the so-called white man has salvation because you, you know, now you don't believe. If you believe the white man does not have salvation because of what I've just broken down, then that's a step in the right direction. Now you believe the truth according to the working of his mighty power. Verse 20, which he wrought in Yahweh Shai when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. All right, let's go to real quick to Mark for a precept. <clears throat> Mark 16 and 19. So then after the Yahweh had spoken unto, unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat at the right hand of Yahweh. So it's just going into that the same. Um, let me see, go back to verse 21. Far above all principality and power and might and dominion, every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. And I put all things, and I put all things under his feet, and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. All right. But with that, I want to give all praise and glory unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Ha Rukha Kodash. Double honors goes out to the elder apostles, a great millstone for teaching us this truth. Also want to acknowledge all the Akiam for teaching us this truth. Um, or all the Akiam who are out there pushing this truth with sincerity. Shalom to the elect.